Hello. Algebra students, Mr. Lawrence here, and we're going to be talking about solution sets. What's that you say, Derek? What's that you say? Solution sets? Solution sets? Get this definition down. Are you ready, Caitlin? Colton, are you paying attention? Get this pencil moving. All of the real numbers that make an equation or an equality true. An equation or an inequality. Now, I know some of you have a hard time with vocabulary because you want to say things your way. Remember, equation has to have an equal sign, like x equals 10 is an equation. On the other hand, 5 plus x is not an equation. It's only an expression. So you got to start speaking the language. All right, did you catch that, Joey? Hey, by the way, Joey, I was proud of you for your performance on your test. Nice job preparing. All right, now an inequality would have a less than or a greater than. You know, x plus 3 is less than 10. Okay, or maybe uh, x minus 7 uh, is greater than or equal to 9. Those are inequalities, okay? So the solution set is all of the real numbers. Remember, we've talked about the real numbers. All the real numbers that make an equation or an equality true. So let's take a look at one. Here we have the equation 3 minus x equals 10. Now, hopefully, you can look at this intuitively. You know, put your pencil down. I, I know you're supposed to take notes, and I am going to have you take notes on this. But put your pencil down, take a look at this equation, and see if you can figure out what x is. I mean, I know that all of you could just go, hey, if this was 3 plus x equals 10, you guys are smart enough to say x would be 7, right? x would be 7. Now, we're, don't worry, we're going to solve it. Don't worry, but we've got to build a better understanding of what we're doing, not just memorizing steps. Well, the problem is we need a negative 7. Well, we need a negative of x. If, if we put negative 7 in here, is this true? Is 3 minus 7 10? Of course it's not. That's not true. So x can't be 7. Hmm, what could x be? How could we somehow make this a positive 7? Well, let me see. If I have a negative x, because it's from right there, and I want it to equal positive 7. Huh. Well, remember, there's a, a 1 in front of there, right? There's a negative 1 attached to the x. What if I divided both sides by negative 1? Then x would equal negative 7. Oh, that's interesting. What would happen if I plugged negative 7 in here? If I went negative 7 like that, I have 3 minus negative 7. Oh, don't taking away the negatives. You know, if I've got a bad habit, that's a negative thing. Like, say I pick my nose. That is a bad habit. I, oh, although some of you think it's a good habit. <clears throat> Trust me, I've seen you. All right, picking my nose is a bad habit, right? Okay, if I could somehow, that's, that's this one right here, the bad habit. If I could take that away, a negative take away, that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? That would be a positive thing. So I'm suggesting to you that this part of the equation is really 3 plus 7 in disguise. Yeah, minus a negative is the same thing as adding a positive. Taking away a negative thing is adding a positive thing. All right, <clears throat> so we see that the answer to this is x equals 7. x equals 7, all right? Now, there's going to be different ways to express this answer. That's one of them, okay? Another way is in set notation. This would be in words. x is 7. I mean, you could literally write out x is 7, or you can write x equals 7 means, means the same thing. This is the word solution, okay, using math symbols. Now, there's set notation. Set notation. And when we have just a simple answer like this and we know we're stuck with the real numbers, we're not restricted to anything, then we can just go like this. You draw this little bracket kind of guy. It's kind of like a guy. See the forehead, the nose, and the chin? Okay, and I know you're not going to do it well. Practice, practice. I, I couldn't draw it at your age either. It's kind of a coordination thing. But the more you practice, you just go forehead, nose, and chin. Okay, and then I put the negative 7 in the set, and then I do the same thing on the other side to close the set. So I do forehead, nose, and chin. And so there's set notation. 
then of course I could also graph it on a number line and the number line would look like this okay let me make it an actual number line here <coughs> excuse me okay gotta get an arrow on that front end there we go the start okay there we go now um, please be intelligent when you make your number lines. Don't try to show every blasted number on it. First of all, how many numbers are on a number line? Look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, let me not put one there. Let me put, say, 10. And over here, I'll put negative 10. And then I have to show negative 7 because it's part of the solution. So I'll put negative 7, a little more than halfway to negative 10. All right? How many numbers are on there? What do you think, Michael? If you're saying four, you are incorrect. There are not four numbers on this number line. There are infinite numbers of numbers on this number line. Well, I said number like 80 million times in that one sentence. <clears throat> By the way, 80 million is on this number line. Yeah, it's way out here somewhere, right? Past there, past my screen. Okay, pi is on here, or uh, probably somewhere around here. Uh, negative the square root of 20 is around here somewhere. Okay, so there's an infinite set of numbers. So here's our three, so, oh, by the way, I didn't finish the solution. Since the seven is the only point, I put a big old dot on seven. Okay, so there's one way, word notation, then there's set notation, and then there's uh, the number line, the three different ways to express it. All right, <clears throat> by the way, I promised to do this one algebraically and it is an acceptable way, but please don't be a slave to the algebra. Please think about what you're doing. Okay, uh, I need to get x alone. There's a 3 attached by addition and a negative 1 attached by multiplication, right? So I'm going to get rid of the addition first because Saddam told me so. And I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. By the way, this is something real simple. I expect you all to have mastered already. Okay, so then I'm going to bring down a negative 1x equals 7. And now if I were doing this uh, by myself, I would never write that 1 there. I would write that. Okay, I know there's a 1 there. Now, I don't like the negative 1 there. It's attached by multiplication, so I'm going to divide by negative 1. Okay, and so, oops. Yeah, 1, not 7. Sorry about that. So x is going to equal 7 divided by negative 1, which is negative 7, which is uh, what we said. Ooh, I had a mistake there. I just caught it. Sorry about that. Okay, x equals negative 7. All right, how about this one? a equals 25. And I know, I know Bree's got her hand up, and she's going to say a equals 5. But I know Bree is so smart, she's going to stop and think, and she's going to say, wait a minute, Mr. Lawrence. I think a is all, could also be negative 5. Yeah, a is 5 or negative 5. Right. Okay. Well, there is our word solution. Now, if you want to see how we should do that algebraically, we would take the square root of both sides. Okay. And then square root of a squared is a. Uh, why? Because a times a is a squared, right? You believe me? a times a is a squared. Therefore, the square root of a squared is a. Just like, just like, 5 times 5 equals 25, right? So the square root of 25, or in other words, 5 squared, right? Isn't that 5 squared? Is plain old 5, okay? Of course, if you're smart like Bree, you know that there's got to be a negative answer there as well. Make sure you get that down. Make sure you're thinking about this. Make sure you're telling your parents about it. The more you talk about math outside the math classroom, the more you're going to start to understand it. At first, you won't understand it at all, okay? At first. But after that, it'll start to build your, your understanding. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, the word notation right here equals 5 or a equals negative 5, our set notation would look like this. There's only two numbers, and we know we're only dealing with the real numbers. There's my face. I'm going to put negative 5 and then 5, and then I'm going to close my set, draw my forehead, my nose, and my chin. There we go. Then, of course, on a number line, we're going to look something like this. 
All right, let's see here. Let me get an arrowhead on him. Arrowhead, where are you? Arrowhead, I found you. Maybe. Okay, it worked. Good. All right, and then, you know, I'm going to show zero on the number line. I like to show zero. Not all the time. I'm going to show five. I'm going to show negative five. Really, these are the only numbers I need to show. If you want to show more, you can, but don't waste your time. You know, some kids can get so um, anal or attentive about it, which means they pay too much attention to detail, and they uh, they put like 85 numbers on it. Why waste your time? We know those numbers are there. Wait, wait, if we don't see the numbers, they're going to disappear? I mean, we're not little children, you know, like when we close our eyes and go to sleep, Honey's still in the other room, right? She didn't disappear. Okay, so there is your number line solution. Let's take a look at number three here. What about x over x equals 1? Now, I'm fooling some of you because right now some of you are thinking, I, I can hear Caitlin's wheels turning. I, I just can hear them, and it's good because, Caitlin, you're a thinker. You keep it up. And I'm, I'm thinking Allie's thinking this too. Allie's going, you know, Mr. Lawrence, I think x can be anything. I don't agree with you, Allie. I don't agree with you. And she's going to go, but wait a minute. She's going to, she's going to, because Allie likes to argue. And, and arguing isn't a bad thing, especially in math. It's an intelligent thing. If you can argue uh, reasonably, then we can have some great discussions and we can learn from each other. So, Allie, <coughs> excuse me, to answer your argument, um, you're, I, I suspect you're going to say, well, Mr. Lawrence, if I put 5 over 5, I'm going to get 1. And if I put, you know, a big number like 100 over 100, I'm going to get 1. So, so far, x can be 5 and x can be 100, right? And if I put a negative in, a negative, I'm going to get negative 7 over negative 7, which is positive 1. And then you're going to try to use my argument against me. You know, I say stuff like fire truck, and you're going to go, well, if I put fire truck, it's a green fire truck. Mr. Lawrence lives in Medina, where our fire trucks are green, believe it or not. Okay. And if I divide that by fire truck, I don't think I can make that masterpiece again, so I'll, I'll cheat. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to get 1, right? And if I take a negative, like negative 7 divided... Oh, I already did a negative. Silly Mr. Lawrence. Uh, if I take a fraction, like 3 fifths, and I divide by 3 fifths... Oh, excuse me. 3 fifths, I'm going to get 1. And if I take pi... I prefer Dutch apple, you know, the apple pie with the crumb on top. Oh, it's good stuff. And if I divide it by pie, I'm going to get one. And so Allie is going to make a good argument. A lot of you are going to support her. The only problem is there's a number we have to consider. Whenever we have division involved, and I trust that you all see the division right there, a fraction bar means divide, we have to consider if the denominator will ever be zero. If, or will, we should say not if, we should say will the denominator, denominator, I like to call the downstairs, will the denominator ever equal zero? Okay, that's a bad thing because we're not allowed to divide by zero. It's not that you're not smart enough. It's that there is no definition in mathematics to divide by zero. No, you cannot divide by zero. Please stop arguing with me. Write it down. You can never divide by zero. I can't believe you guys are arguing with me. Look, 5 divided by, oops, 5 divided by 5 is 1. But 5 divided by 0 is undefined. It's undefined. There is no definition. You can never divide by zero. Never, 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 never. Never, 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 never. Somebody goes, no, 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 Mr. Lawrence, I can do it. 5 divided by 0 is, is 5. No, 5 divided by 1 is 5. Okay? So you you see, you can never, ever divide by 0. Did I say that enough times? Okay, so when I look at this denominator, I see that if x equals 0, my denominator turns to 0, right? So this is true for all real numbers, Ellie, except 
zero. All right. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to write it in a little different set notation, and I'm going to write it like this. There's my start, and I'm going to put my variable here. That's x, right? My variable, and I'm dealing with the real number. So I'm going to put the real number system, uh, real number system uh, symbol here. Excuse me. So say x is any real number. That's how you read this. X is any real number, and I draw this little line, and I say such that, such that x does not equal zero. And there is your set notation. Okay, this is your variable. Your variable goes first. Variable. Okay, um, this is the types of numbers you're using. The number types. And in this case, we're using the entire real number system. We're not restricted to integers or fractions or just any real number. Okay, so x is any real number. That's how you read this. x is any real number number. Okay? And then this over here is called the restriction. Restriction. It tells you if there's any exceptions to your previous statement. X is any real number, but it can't be zero. So X is any real number such that X does not equal zero. Oh, and by the way, this bar is read as such that. Okay? So like we did all those examples, um, um, you know, we came up with all different ways where it was true. X could be fire truck, right? But X isn't allowed to be zero. That's what this is saying. Okay, this is your set notation right here. In words, I would write it like this. My word notation would be X is an element of any real number such that X does not equal zero. And it looks very similar to the set notation in this case. It won't always, but in this one. On a number line, it's kind of an interesting solution. I like it a lot. I think it's kind of cool. Then I am a math geek, but, you know, who rules the world? The math geeks and the science geeks. They sure do. They, they create all the cool games and phones and MP3 players and whatever else you guys are playing on. And... Um, they make our world understandable and livable. All right. I have to show zero on the number line, but zero is not included in the solution. So I'm going to put a big open point there. And then I'm going to shade where every other number is. So for example, all these numbers and all these numbers make the equation true. Oops, I lost my arrowhead. Sorry about that. So X is any real number except zero. So I've shaded the entire number line except for zero. And again, you don't have to put a lot of numbers on. If you feel insecure and you want to put a positive and negative on, go ahead. But that's all you need. All right, so let's move along here. Look at number four here. Solve for X. Now, some of you are going to look at this and go, I don't know what to do. I'm going to hide under the covers. The boogie equation is coming to get me. That's not an equation that dances, although I could probably make this equation dance if I want to. Let's see. Do, 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 Yeah, it dances very well. Okay, the boogie equation, you know, you're afraid of it because you don't know what to do. Well, look, you do notice something. You see a number times a quantity you should know to distribute. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's distribute. Get 3x plus x squared, and that says it equals 3x plus x squared. Hey, wait a minute. Did I repeat myself? I sure did. Now, some of you are going to be a slave to equation solving, and that's okay, and I'll, I'll do it that way, but right now, a lot of you should have some, some strange things going on, like you're thinking, hey, it's the same thing. I'll bet Laura Miles is thinking it's the same thing. I'll bet she is. And I'll bet you that's puzzling her a little bit. You know, she got a question like, wait a minute, why is it the same thing? I don't see that very often. Okay. Well, let me do it the slave way, you know, slave to the equation way. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of these x squares. I, I don't want x squares on both sides of the equation. I'm going to take away an x squared. Okay. And when I take away an x squared, then I'm left with uh, 3x equals 3x. All right. <clears throat> now, I don't want x's on both sides of my equation, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I'm going to get 0 equals 0. Now, what I'm about to tell you, I could have done here 
when I was Laura having that thought, hmm, it's the same thing. I could have done it here when I saw, hmm, it's the same thing, right? Same thing. Okay, but if I don't see it, I can go all the way down to numbers. And I have a question for you. When does zero equal zero? Well, zero always equals zero, right? Always, always. And since this is always true, we call it an identity. Look at it down here, I've got a definition. Identity, an equation that is always true. Did you get that down? Did you put it on your flashcard? Identity, an equation that is always true. So, let's see here. An equation that is always true. So, since 0 equals 0, the solution for this is all real numbers. So, in words, I could say x is any real number. Okay, that's my word solution. Set notation, I would do like this. Let's draw my face. X is any real number. Now there's no restriction on it, so I don't have that such that part, okay? On the last one, I restricted, hold on, that guy grew a fang or something. Looks like a vampire, get him out of there. Yay, vampire attack. Of course, a lot of you guys think vampires are romantic because of those silly Twilight books. Oh my goodness. That's why you don't keep your pencil sharp. You don't want to hurt any vampires. I understand. Okay, so X is any real number. Uh, that's how we read this. And there are no restrictions. In the previous problem, X wasn't allowed to be zero, so I had to have, you know, that such that X does not equal zero part. Not true in this case. Zero will make this true. Now, if you don't believe me, test it. Pick any number you want and plug it in for x. Okay, plug it in for x on both sides of the equation, you'll always get a true statement. You won't always get zero equals zero. If I put one in, I'm gonna get one times three plus one, and three times one plus one squared. See how I just substituted one in for x? So this is gonna be three plus one is four, and four times one is four, and three times one is Three and one times one is one. Contrary to popular opinion, some of you like to tell me one times one is two. It's because you're not thinking. All right, four equals three plus one, so four equals four. And see how I got the same number? That doesn't mean x equals four. No, x is any real number. X is any real number. On a number line, it's kind of a strange one. It's almost trivial to do it, but if I put zero on, and then I would highlight the entire number line. The entire number line. Shoop, and shoop, and shoop, and shoop. And in class, I'll show you how to do that on paper, okay? All right, now, by the way, math has a really strange symbol. It kind of looks like a computer zero there. It is called the empty set, and I wrote it very poorly. Let me rewrite it. I didn't realize I'd written it so poorly. Get back to Poiple. It's the empty set. Okay, and it looks like the Ghostbusters thing, you know, the circle with a slash through it. It's called the set with no members. It's the set with no members. The name is the empty set. The definition is the set with no members. It's reserved for equations that are never true. So if you ran into an equation that could never, ever have a solution, it would be the empty set. And yes, we will run into them. See if you could make one up. Show it to me in class tomorrow. All right, let's come down here to this inequality. The inequality is going to be solved very similarly. I'll bet you a lot of you could look at this and tell me, hey, W is going to be 2. The only problem is W equals 2 is not the correct solution. Now, you see it's greater than. So you can pretend this says W equals 4, W plus 2 equals 4, and then use your equation solving skills if you like. And you do get W equals 2. The problem is, it should look more like this. I'm over here on the left, and I get w is greater than two. So w is any number greater than two. So in, uh, you can do it like this. This is your word solution. w is greater than two. Um, two, do your set notation, w, because that's the variable, any real number such that uh, w is greater than 2. There's your set notation. 
on a number line, and maybe I'll do it right here. I said a model in class, which I will, but I'll also do it here. On the number line, let me get an arrowhead on that end. Okay, I have to show two on there. Put zero. Since two is not a part of the solution set, how do I know it's not a part? Because it's not equal to. It doesn't say W can be 2. It has W has to be greater than 2. So, for example, 3 is a part of the solution set. 4 is a part of the solution set. 3 and a half is. A billion is. 2 and a quarter. But 2 is not a part of the solution set. So I put an open point at 2 because 2 is not included. And then I shade towards the numbers that make it true. I'm shading all the numbers, all the real numbers on the number line that are larger than 2. And notice I don't shade anything over here because I'd get a false statement. All right, I think one more and then we can wrap this video up. It's been a little bit long, but that's okay. Hopefully you're taking some good notes, ready to practice tomorrow. All right, remember, <clears throat> we need to take the square root of each side. But this, this is kind of a weird one because uh, if I just go B is greater than or equal to positive or negative 3. That doesn't work. That is not true. Okay, let's think about this intuitively. Where, what numbers on a number line are going to make this true? Let's check some numbers out. Is 0 going to make it true? No, 0 is not greater than 9. 2, no, 2 squared is 4. That's not greater than 9. But 3 makes it true, right? Yeah. 3 squared is greater than or equal to 9. How about 4 squared? Yeah, it's greater than or equal to 9. Sure it is, and so on. So 3, uh, you know, 4, 5, all those numbers in between. 3 and a half squared? Sure it is. Okay, if you remember my squaring numbers that end in 5 trick, this would just be uh, 12 and 2 quarters, uh, 12 and 1 quarter, excuse me, which is greater than or equal to 9. Okay, so the decimals are going to be included, the fractions, from 3 and up. So my number line solution is going to look like this. I'm going to have a point here. And I'm going to go like that. What's that, Laney? No, go ahead, say it. It's a good idea. Yeah, Laney just had a great idea, guys. She's saying, but Mr. Lawrence, doesn't negative 3 squared, and parentheses are very important here, isn't that also greater than or equal to 9? Because negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Yes, Laney, you're absolutely correct. So negative 3 has to be in the solution set, but it's way over here. We can't just shade this way, because if we do, we'll include numbers that aren't true. Well, what else is included? What do you think? Uh, Megan, what well, negative 4 is negative 4? I notice I'm using parentheses, Julia. Remember I said when you substitute, it's really smart to use parentheses, parentheses especially if it's a negative. Negative 4, is that greater than or equal to 9? Um, sure it is. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. That's greater than or equal to 9. There we go. So it looks like negative 3 is a part of the solution set. And everything smaller than it. Oh, so I actually went to my number line solution first. You see, I'm going to get b is greater than or equal to 3. Or b is less than or equal to negative 3. Yeah, you notice that inequality turned around. Okay, you see, it had to, to explain this. There's my uh, solution in words, or my equation, and then finally, uh, I need set notation. Okay, my variable, oop, my face doesn't look quite right. Forehead, nose, and chin. Ooh, maybe we should do head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Go on, everybody, get up. Go ahead, do it. Head, shoulders, knees. I'm watching you. Uh, anyway, all right, let me put my variable in. B is any real number such that um, B is less than or equal to negative 3, or I'm running into my other work. Sorry. B is greater than or equal to positive 3. And there you go. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you've paid attention. We're going to get some practice with this. Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Have a good night, everybody.